I'm Dr. Keith Delaplane, extension entomologist and honeybee specialist at the University of Georgia. And I'm glad you could join me for another session in our series, Honeybees and Beekeeping, as we continue to look at a year in the life of an apiary. The main goal of bee management is to maximize colony populations before the major nectar flows begin. If their population needs are satisfied, bees turn the nectar into surplus honey that we can harvest instead of using it to make more bees. In this part of the country, almost all the nectar comes in during the months of April and May, and that doesn't leave us much time. We must push the colonies to grow fast, or we may miss an entire honey crop. In our last show, we installed the packaged bees in their hives, and these young colonies are now bursting with activity. Workers are building comb, and the queens are laying eggs nonstop. We must feed the colonies, medicate them, and watch closely for any problems. In this program, we watch the normal development of new colonies, and we see the first new workers emerge. We see the populations swell, and before we know it, it's time for the nectar flow. We add honey supers, and even move the hives to another area to collect a very special kind of honey, sourwood. This is the busiest time of year for a beekeeper, so sit back, enjoy, and let's see what happens. Before you even enter the hive, take a look at the entrance. Bees are bringing in large amounts of pollen. Notice the balls of pollen on their legs. The hind legs of a worker have a structure called the pollen basket. As a bee visits a flower, it collects pollen with its front legs and mouth parts. Pollen is passed down to the rear legs and forced into the pollen basket. Back at the hive, the bee removes the pollen pellet with its middle legs, places it in a cell, and house bees pack it in tightly. It's always a good sign when you see bees collecting pollen. This usually means the queen is well and the colony is rearing brood. Queenless bees without brood are not motivated to collect pollen. Before we go any further, let's talk about the development stages a young bee goes through. First, the queen lays an egg in the bottom of the cell. Three days later, it will hatch into a tiny larva. Workers feed these young larvae pollen and a secretion called brood food. They grow quickly, and when they fill most of the cell, the workers cap the cell. The larva then transforms into a pupa. This is a quiet, non-feeding stage that somewhat resembles the future adult. Several days later, the pupa molts into an adult, which emerges from the cell. Development times for workers, drones, and queens vary. It's been one week since we released the queens, and now's the time to check colony growth. By this time, there should be white wax combs under construction. These cells contain sugar syrup, pollen, eggs, and young larvae. Here's the queen. Notice how she stands out from the workers because she is longer, her thorax is bigger, and her abdomen is elongated and looks like leather. This young queen is still pretty nervous. Mature queens move more slowly around the comb as they look for empty cells in which to lay eggs. At first, you may have trouble finding the queen, but with experience, you'll find her more quickly. When you work a hive, assume the queen is on every frame you pick up. That way, you will work more gently and reduce the chance of accidentally killing her. This is a good looking young colony. It means that we're going to be successful beekeepers. While I'm here, I need to be sure there's plenty of protein supplement and sugar syrup. As this colony grows, I'll add a second hive body and eventually some honey supers. But not quite yet. Oh, they're a little nervous acting. Kind of runny and flying a lot. Well, at 
least they have nectar and pollen, but I don't see any eggs. This colony's not doing so well. They're loud, kind of nervous acting, and no eggs or larvae. And that means the queen must be dead. We still have time to salvage this colony, but we're gonna have to move quickly to get another queen in there. I'm gonna order another queen and call my supplier. In the meantime, though, I'll take a frame of brood from this strong colony. This is a good frame. It has lots of eggs and lots of larvae in it. I have to check and be sure I don't accidentally take the queen. Well, the queen's not on this frame, so I'm going to shake off all the workers. And then take this frame of brood and slide it in here in this queenless colony. And replace this frame over here. Stocking brood in this queenless colony will help boost its population and maintain it until the new queen arrives. It's never a good idea to steal brood from a colony but the benefits to this queenless colony far outweigh the costs to the donor colony. <laughs>